Okay, we took our movie experience from this to this ambilight lighting effect. Say hello to the Hyperion project and let's build an ultimate ambilight TV that now works with Apple HomeKit. Now, if you don't have one of those cool Philips Ambilight TVs that lights up different colors based on the video that's showing on the screen, then don't worry, there is an open source ambient lighting project called Hyperion. Through the combination of additional hardware components, this project enables LED strips to provide the same Ambilight lighting effect. And most importantly, this all can be controlled in Apple HomeKit by using HomeBridge. Anyways, if you're into smart home DIY and love the Apple HomeKit ecosystem, then I've done tons of tutorial videos that you can use. So pretty please do take a look, do like, share and subscribe to always follow along. So for all of this to work and integrate the ambient lighting project into Apple HomeKit, we will go through all of the components in detail to keep the installation clean and minimal. Plus, I've also left all of the links to the products in the description as well. So first up, a measuring tape. You need to first know the total length of the LED strip you will need. Measure all of the four sides of the TV. Now for sizes with 55 inches and below, a five meter LED strip will definitely will do the job. Now the next is the star of the show, a WS2812B LED strip. Now, this is an individual addressable IC LED strip. In other words, each LED on the strip can be controlled independently. They come typically in 30 or 60 LEDs per meter. I will be using a five meter with 60 LEDs per meter as it provides the best visual effect. Since it's being used indoors, it will be an IP30 rating. Next is the LED corner connections. Once you cut your LED strips based on the measurements, you still need to connect them, but without any soldering. And that's where the LED corner connectors help you to collect the LED strips and also be aligned with the pinouts of your LED strip. So in my case, I will be using a three pin 10 mm connector. They also come with the L shaped solderless connector. Typically you will need seven connectors and three solder less connectors. Next up is the Nord MCU card flash with the WLED project. Now this is basically the controller of the LED strip. It receives data from Hyperion and then transmits data to every addressable LED. Plus it can be controlled with Homebridge. Unlike other videos that I have seen, I have used a Nord MCU with the WLED software to run the entire Hyperion project. Don't worry, in this tutorial, I will also show you on how to install the WLED software in a Node MCU card. Next up is the power supply unit. These addressable LEDs will need a five volt power supply. The required power supply depends on your setup and the number of LEDs you have. As a general guideline, if you are using an LED strip that's five meters and below, I would recommend at least a 10 amp power supply to get both that clean finish that I will be using together with a couple of female male DC connectors to connect with the Node MCU. But if your power needs are higher than 10 amps, then you can use a large metal power supply. Remember, if you purchase one of those power supplies, I highly recommend putting it inside of a project box for power for better safety. Now, next up is, is needing a USB video capture card. Since I will be running both the Hyperion project as well as the home bridge from this hub, I will be using a USB to HDMI video capture card. Again, it is important to note that most HDMI to USB capture devices suffer from a small amount of lag, which can cause a slight delay in the reaction of the LEDs. Now, if your TV has an analog output, then you can purchase an analog to USB video capture card. Now, in my case, since my TV doesn't have neither of those outputs, I need to purchase the next component, which is the HDMI splitter. If you prefer content in 1080p, then there are tons of options. With 4K pass-through, the options are way limited to fit your budget. 
as they range between $30 to $530. But I was able to find this model, which has one input and four HDMI outputs and supports 4K and HDR video pass-through. But it does not support HDMI CAC control, which was not a deal breaker as I could control my TV and audio system through the Apple remote app using plugins and also had to purchase additional two HDMI cables. Well, I connected my Apple TV to the splitter and used one output going to the video capture card and the other going to my Samsung TV hub. And lastly, the good news is that in this tutorial, we will install the Hyperion Ambilight project in the same Argon One hub that has Homebridge already installed and that is already connected with my home etc so there's no need to flash any additional software this keeps the entire setup clean and organized that's located in the same media center as my apple tv now before we dive into the tutorial some of my lessons learned so first thing buy spares get more than one five meter led strip and more set of led strip connectors it took me two tries to get the whole LED strip installed correctly. And I must admit, I did fumble. Take your time. This video is extensive. From setting up WLED to Hyperion to the Homebridge plugin. Pause and resume with the installation. In reality, the whole job took me more than an hour or so to complete. I have left all of the timestamps in the description to go back and forth. So be patient with the setup. However, once you're done, your whole TV viewing experience will literally change. So let's not waste any more time and let's jump into this tutorial. Now, this is the link of the WLED project. It is done by Ed Cookie, the name of the developer. There are two important links to click. One is the version, which I'm going to open up in the next window, and the wiki. Now, within the wiki itself, you are going to see a full page dedicated to all of the tutorials and resources. And the first video I recommend is, is from uh, this one, Dr. Ziz. He's the gold standard of integrating these strips into Home Assistant and uh, uh, as well as other platforms. But this is some of the additional information that this website brings. And this is where the WLED version is, which we will go and download. So in my case, we are going to go ahead and download this ESP826.bin. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go now and flash the Node MCU V3 that I have. Now to uh, flash this device, all you have to do is get a micro USB cable. You're going to connect one end into it. And then I'm just going to protect it over here on this small sponge. And then the other end, you're going to plug it into your USB port. This is the link for the Node MCU PY flasher. So if you go to releases, you can download the version over here. So I've gone ahead and download it over here. So all you got to do is click on reload. You should see over here. And then you want to go ahead and load the file. So in this case, this is the file that we load, downloaded. We're going to click on open. And all we have to do is click on low flash node MCU. So while the flashing is going on, you will see some blue light activity on the uh, card. And give it a couple of seconds, you should see a successful message. That's it. We can see over here that the fla firmware has successfully flashed. And now we can uh, unplug and replug the resettle device to add it to our network. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to add in the um, node MCU into our network. So we're going to select the WLED. You should see a pop-up coming up once it's connected. And you want to go to Wi-Fi settings. You want to put the name of your network. And if you want, you could go and give a static IP address, but I'm going to leave it as it is. And I'm going to just go to click on save and connect. So give it a couple of uh, seconds, almost 30 seconds for the uh, configuration to uh, take effect and to be added into your network. I'm not sure if you're aware of this site called thinkiverse.com. So in this case, I came across this case over here. It, it fits very well. It's very easy to put all of the cables that I wanted to manage under it instead of putting it in, in a soap box. So I've added this link in the description. You can go and uh, download it. And the ones that I used was uh, the top and the bottom first two files, the version two, sorry. It was the version two files over here. So I took these two files and printed this 
case. Quick overview of it after printing. So this is what the case looks like. You get that opening for the Wi-Fi card as well as for the reset and the other uh, option over there. Plus there are pin uh, holes and this is where the USB connector fits in as well as the cable that would go into the WLED uh, strip. So very handy. Now internally you will see that over here you can uh, without any soldering you can add push in the cables over there since they're very fine. So the first one is for the um, power then is for the ground followed by the data cable that's over there. So the pins are uh, D4, uh, Win and ground. Let's go and insert the Node MCU into the 3D case. So you want to align this slowly or with all of the pins so you don't damage them and then you want to gently press it into place. So the first time is going to be a little bit hard but a slow alignment and push it in. Now you also want to make sure whilst you're pushing there could be some loose contacts. You can use hot glue to keep those cables in place and once it's gently pushed in you want to make sure it's flush with the case. So that's all the all-round view of the casing and now let's go ahead and put the cover on top and you should hear two click sounds ensuring it's closed. And with that being said, we have the Node MCU nicely tucked into the 3D case, giving access to all of the key parts as well as the Wi-Fi coverage to your network. Now, before you go ahead to install the LED strip, make sure there is a gap between the TV and the wall so that the light from the LED strip has a surface to bounce off. Then make sure you clean the back of the TV before applying the LED strip. Then you want to decide from where you want to start your LED strip. My recommendation is to start from the lower left or lower right. In my case, I will start from the lower left. Now when applying an LED strip, you need to follow the arrow sign that's printed on the LED strip. This will avoid any electric short circuits and also ensure the five volt data and ground follow the same part for the entire application of the LED strip to your TV. Take your time when connecting the LED strip and always ensure the arrow sign is in the forward direction from the starting point to the end point. Another tip is to always keep the 5 volt sign on the outside. Since this was my second take in applying the LED strip, I already knew the right and left side of the TV needed 39 LEDs and the top and bottom side needed 71 LEDs. So giving me in total of using 220 LEDs. And we will also need these values to configure Hyperion and WLED as well. Now, before we start, this will be the outcome of the setup where we connect the Node MCU to the beginning of the LED strip, connect a female DC barrel to the red and white cable of the LED strip, where red is positive and white is negative then connect it to the power supply. So I first went ahead and applied a LED corner connector and stuck them with a double sided tape. Gently press it to the back of the TV. Measure the first side. Then go ahead and connect the LEDs which in my case will be 39 in total. Cut the strip at the right location. Peel the tape from the back and insert it into the connector. Remember Keep the LED strip arrow pointing to the next connector. Be patient when inserting the LED strip. It does take some time. Close the tab and align the LED strip to the back of the TV. Since this LED strip is the beginning, the cables on the end of the strip will be connected to the Node MCU and power supply. Then you want to go ahead and follow the same process to apply the LED strip to the top. Measure the distance and cut the strip, which in my case for the top will be 71 LEDs. Cut the strip at the right location. Peel the tape from the back and insert it into the connector. Remember, keep the LED strip arrow pointing to the next connector. Then follow the same process for the next side. Measure the distance and the LED count needs to be same as the other side, which will be 39 LEDs. Peel the tape from the back 
and insert it into the connector. Remember, keep the LED strip arrow pointing to the next connector. For the bottom, the LED count will be 71 LEDs, which is the same as the top side. Peel the tape from the back and insert it into the connector. Remember, keep the LED arrow to the next connector. Terminate the end with a LED connector. Now, connect the Node MCU controller to the beginning of the LED strip and then connect the power supply to the LED strip. Now, power up the LED strip and a Node MCU. And let's go and install Hyperion. This is the GitHub page to the Hyperion software repository. Click on releases and scroll all the way down where the packages are available based on your hardware. Let's go ahead and open up terminal and let's SSH into our Argon One hub that has Homebridge already installed. Let's first go ahead and update all of the Linux packages. Once that's completed, let's execute one more command to check the hardware we are using. In our case, it's ARM v71. There's a package available for that and let's right click to copy the link and type wget followed by pasting the link to download the package to your hub. Once completed, you want to copy that text. Type sudo tpkg space dash i and paste the text. If you see this error, then there is an easy fix. Just copy paste this command that I have left in the description. This will complete the install and once that's done, the system will show you a link to the Hyperion UI. Copy the link to access the UI. This confirms Hyperion is now installed in the same hub as Homebridge. Now, from this point onwards, the configuration will be done to connect and work with Homebridge. First, you want to go and update the settings level to expert. Click on save and reload. If you want, you can also go ahead and update the password to access the Hyperion UI. Then go to general and update the configuration name to Homebridge. Click on save settings. Then also update the hardware instance to Hyperion. This will help you to manage all of your future instances. Then. Next is LED instances and select the controller type to WLED. Add the IP address. If you don't have it, use the LANSCAN app to locate the IP and then populate the information. Then move over to LED layout. Click on classic layout and here we are going to add the LED count that we installed per side of the TV where the top and bottom values is 71 and right and left is 39. Lastly, you want to tell Hyperion from which side of the TV the LED strip starts. In my case, it's the lower left hand corner. The dark black box represents the first LED of your strip. It will also show you your total count of LEDs, which is 220 and the max power consumption. Then we will move on to the capturing hardware to enable USB capture. Click on the box to activate and select the USB capture card, which is detected by the Pi. Scroll down and save settings. Then we go to the network services and disable all authentication and click on save settings. Leave other settings as is and go to the dashboard. Let's also quickly configure the LED count in the WLED UI as well. Now, when you access the WLED UI, you will be prompted that WLED is receiving live data from Hyperion. Now, this is a good signal that everything is working and connected. Click on config and go to LED preferences and update the value to 220 for total LED count. Check the LED outputs and save settings. Then you want to go to sync interfaces and ensure force max brightness is enabled. Then save settings. Now we are done with all of the software installation and configuration. Now let's go back to the installed LED strip. I'll be honest with you. When you power up the LED strip for the first time, there's a 50-50 chance for the entire thing to light up in the first go. So please be patient. 
adjust the connectors and ensure there is a current flow with all the four sides. I use the WLED effects and color wheel to ensure all LEDs are getting data correctly and corresponding with the commands. Be patient and adjust the connectors and LED. Once you get a sense the colors are corresponding to the data sent by the WLED controller, then go to the Hyperion dashboard and click RGB Byte Auto Wizard and click on Continue. Then match which color shows your LEDs when the color dot above shows. Well, now we are done and that's how clean and neat the setup is. Now, make sure in the Hyperion dashboard, the status and LED output are enabled. Now, the last part of the video is installing and configuring the plugin to bring all of the good stuff into Apple HomeKit. All right, this is the link to the plugin. It is two years old, but it works perfectly. Have had no issues. I've been using this plugin for more than two months and it just works fine. And what we want to do first is access our Homebridge dashboard. So use your credentials. You want to go to plugins and my easy tip to look for a plugin is copy this text and paste it in the search bar, hit enter. And if you go back to the plugin configuration, the only thing you need to add in is your local host, which represents the IP address uh, on the device you're running Homebridge. So in my case, um, I will copy this text and since I have the plugin already installed and I'm using it, I will go to settings and I'm only going to update the host. So even if I add in another text, it is the same. The only thing that changed was the IP address. So again, the IP address is the device that runs your home bridge. So in my case, this is the address. There is no other settings you need to change. If you want, you can update the name and the Ambilight name. That's it. You can go ahead and restart the service, but since it's already active in my setup, if I open up HomeKit, they appear as a group. So you can add in a static LED backlight. You can choose whatever color you want, or you can turn on and off the Ambilight effect. So I've used this Ambilight effect from my Plex movie scene, and I've used it in my Plex uh, tutorial video, which you can go and check it out. And basically I created a movie scene, added uh, the Ambilight to activate when the uh, Plex movie sensor is activated. And also I use the movie scene when I enjoy a couple of movies with my family and I just turn it on and it gives that entire Ambilight in fact. So uh, that's how simple it is to configure an explosive device into Apple HomeKit. And just like that. We built an ultimate Ambilight TV that now works with Apple HomeKit and gives you that immersive viewing experience. Anyways, I have more Homebridge tutorials that you can use and also build your own DIY Apple HomeKit ecosystem. So don't feel shy to like and subscribe. And until the next time, stay safe and cheers.